Hello everyone, welcome back. So in this episode, we're continuing where we left off in the last one, where we started adding the elements necessary to introduce dynamic values and dynamic paths into our stories. So we've already taken care of choices and having those be able to load new uh, stuff, but now we've actually gotten into variables. In the last episode, we established a variable store where we can define variables, specifically whoever's writing the dialogue files, and manage and modify those values as needed. Those can be any type of value because we're storing them in an object format. So that does absolutely no good for us, though, unless we add a way to incorporate that into our dialogue files. Right now, we've just got our testing script, so we need to introduce logical lines that will both declare these variables and modify them and manage them, but also to, uh, to check them, to run conditions and see if we, if we are able to execute certain lines of, of dialogue or commands within our dialogue files. So we need to get started on that. But there's one thing that we need to look at first. Right now, we have our choice logical line, which will go ahead and take care of ripping encapsulated data within these little brackets. That way we can get all of the lines that are isolated for this particular portion in the file. But now as we introduce a new logical line for conditions, we can see the same type of format. And so since the choice script right now is the one that has the extraction for encapsulated data, we'll actually want to refactor that into a different class that any logical line can use. So we'll be taking it right out of choices and implementing that into some sort of utilities class that no matter what logical line we're running, it can go ahead and rip whatever encapsulated data it needs. So as we run condition checks, we'll have an if statement and possibly an else, depending on if that's what you want to run. Uh, I will be showing how to do them both here because they'll be incorporated together, but we don't have to include else. Either way, we do have encapsulated data, so we're going to need to rip it here. So we need to define something that will We'll give that extraction function to all of our logical line classes. For that, let's come into our core scripts and go to the logical lines folder where we're going to create a new script, and this one is going to be the logical line utilities. As we work in this script, let's encapsulate it within our namespace for dialog logical lines, and also make sure that you're using system.text.regularExpressions and system.link namespaces, as we'll be making frequent use of those with this utilities class. Now, since the logical line for the choice is currently what handles ripping encapsulated data, we're going to head into that script and see exactly what we need. So, first off, we have the encapsulation start and end identifiers, so we know that we're going to rip those, so let's go ahead and cut that and paste that into our logical line utilities. But this utilities class is going to be a container for several subclasses because we'll be running different kind of uh, operations such as encapsulation operations and expressions once we get into conditions and that sort of thing. So let's actually turn this logical line utilities into a static class if I could ever spell. The reason we're turning this class static is so that way we can just reference it at the top of our file and we will have access to all of the utilities that we need. They won't just be variables, but they'll be functions as well. So we can go ahead and just make a new class inside of here specifically for encapsulation. So we'll say public static class and we'll just call it encapsulation. Now, inside of this encapsulation class, here we're going to go ahead and paste in our values for the encapsulation start and end identifiers. And we can see in our execute function, when it's ripping the data, it's getting that into raw choice data. So this is a class that we're going to want to extract as well. So I'll go ahead and cut that, which is going to give errors in this file, but that's fine. And we'll go ahead and take that to our encapsulation class. So right up before I define those constants, I'm going to paste that in, but I'm going to rename this to encapsulated data. So this is the data that we'll be ripping. And as well as getting the ending index, why don't we go ahead and also grab the starting index. That should have everything that we should need for encapsulation. Next thing we want is to take these lines where we identify whether a line is an encapsulation start or end point. So we'll cut those, and we'll paste those inside of the encapsulation class. Only right here, we need to make sure that we set this to static. Since this is a static class, our references need to be static as well. 
Okay, so now the next thing that we want to rip is actually this function called rip choice data. This is what's ripping the encapsulation, uh, all the text contained within inside of those identifiers. So all we need to do is extract all of this right into our encapsulation class inside of the utilities, and we'll be able to extract all the information we need for any logical line. So let's go ahead and paste that in right here, but I need to make this static. And I'm also going to change this from raw choice data to encapsulated data and update the references here as well. Great. So now let's also rename this to rip encapsulation data. Now, if we come back to our choice line, what we can do now is we can go ahead and do something neat here we can reference everything inside of our encapsulation class from the utilities and have access to the functions and the variables inside by saying using static and it's going to be logical line utilities and we're going to say dot encapsulation so we have access to everything inside of that encapsulation class so we could change raw choice data to i can't believe i just said data data into encapsulation data for some reason it's not showing up okay yeah so i need to change private to public make sure that we have access to that um and we also need access to the encapsul the rip function here i think the choice also needs access to check these as well so we'll make those public so after making those public, now if we come back to choice, we can say encapsulated data and data equals rip encapsulated data. We'll also change the reference to raw choice data in get choices from data to encapsulated data. And that takes care of our errors. So we just need to define how it rips the data from the encapsulators. If we look at that function, what it's doing is it's grabbing the current conversation and just getting whatever the current progress is. And that works for choices, but if we have something like our if statement and it has an else at the end, we may want to rip both the if and the else data from their encapsulators and we won't necessarily be starting at the same current progress point. So we'll want that to be something that we can pass in. And we may as well pass in the conversation as well, just in case we want to get encapsulated data from a different conversation or just make things available to us later down the line. So let's go ahead and say that conversation is going to be conversation. And we'll also specify a starting index so we can pass in a conversation and we can pass in the progress that we're working at. Now, another thing is for our choice, we want to make sure that we rip the title uh, because we're going to be using that and applying it to the screen. For our conditional statements, we don't necessarily need to rip the title, we just need to evaluate it. So all that we would want to rip is what's inside of the encapsulators. So let's make an option for us to rip the encapsulation header or just the data inside. This will be a boolean called rip header and encapsulators and by default we'll set that to false so we only grab the lines within the encapsulation. For our choice then, that means we need to go ahead and grab the conversation and the progress before we try to rip it. So we'll say that the current conversation is going to equal the dialogue system dot instance dot conversation manager dot conversation and the progress is going to equal the dialogue system dot instance dot conversation manager dot progress so when we go to rip it we will pass in the current conversation we'll tell it where to start which is at our current progress and we'll also tell it to rip the header because we need the title for this choice so rip header and encapsulators will be true for choices so when we rip this data we no longer need to grab the conversation and the current progress here but instead, what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and let me update those names there. And starting index, I'll replace current progress with that. 
So we've, we're already getting it assigned to us. So the only thing that we need to do is when we create this new encapsulated data is we're just going to go ahead and specifying the starting index as well. So starting index equals the starting index, the one that was passed in. So we're assigning the starting index of the encapsulated data just so we have it for record. Okay, and now the only thing we have to change in this body is when we rip this line. So we will we will only want to add the line if we are ripping the header and encapsulators or if we're or if this is just something within the encapsulator. So we need to evaluate if this is something we're supposed to be ripping. Because if we don't want the header, then we don't want to add it to the lines. So if rip header and encapsulators, then we'll go ahead and we'll add everything. Or we need to make sure that our encapsulation depth is greater than zero, and we are not on an ending encapsulator here. So at not is ending encapsulation end. So we'll specify that as the line, and only then will we go ahead and add this line. That way for our choice, we'll grab the header, and we'll grab everything inside, but for our conditions, we'll only grab the lines that are executed if it's true, and only the lines that are executed if it's false. Everything else we can leave just as it is. We've extracted everything that we need for our utilities, so that way it's available for any other logical line, and our choices should still work the same, but let's just go ahead and confirm just in case. So now I'm going to go ahead and load up a dialog line that has two choices in it, and everything should work just fine. Making sure that that is set in my test dialog files, let's go ahead and start up, and we should be able to run these choices through. Alright, let's test some choices. Are you ready? There's our choice, so I'm going to go ahead and say no, and he says too bad, I'm doing it anyway. Here's another choice, so we've exited the first one, and it looks like it's ripping everything correctly. So let's go ahead and do arachnids. And then, have you ever seen a baby jumping spider? Oh yeah, those are pretty cute from the, from a distance. They are actually pretty cute, honestly. Especially when they're carrying the little dew drops on their head. Yeah, that's cute. Okay, say what you will, everyone's got their preferences and everything's working. Great, so our encapsulation is now extracted into another class and we are clear to proceed and work on our conditions and our variable declarations now.